Number 15, using energy considerations, calculate the average force a 60 kilogram sprinter exerts backward on the track to accelerate from two to eight meters per second in a distance of 25 meters if he encounters a headwind that exerts an average force of 30 newtons against him. All right. So first, if we're trying to find the uh, average force right from an energy perspective, we probably should be thinking about this formula over here on the right hand side, right? So the total work done on the system will equal the average uh, net external force on that system multiplied by the distance that force is exerted over, uh, then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance or displacement vector. All right, so in order to calculate F, we need to know three things, the angle, the distance, and the work. So now consider the work energy theorem over here on the right, all right, that basically says that the change in kinetic energy of an object should be equal to the work performed or done on that object, all right? So in other words, we can rewrite that as this, the change in kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy should be equal to one half m multiplied by the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared. And that should then all be equal to the work, all right? So we do know the final velocity of this individual and the initial, okay? So we do know that the change in kinetic energy, all right, had to have been one half multiplied by the mass, the mass of the sprinter, 60. His final velocity or her final velocity was uh, eight, right? Meters per second minus then the initial, which was two squared, okay? So just plug this into the calculator. So we know that the change in kinetic energy now, right, of the sprinter was 0.5 times 60 times uh, eight squared minus two squared. Okay, so we get a value of 1800, right? So 1800, and that is in terms of joules. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the change in energy of the sprinter, right? So the sprinter went from a slower speed to a faster speed, right? So energy, you know, he added energy essentially to his system, right? Okay, so that's great. Now, I can now take this value, all right, that I just found and plug it in for the work here, all right? Because I want to find the work um, done by the sprinter. So now, if I take that value and plug it in, so that would now give me a value of 1800. That would then equal the net external force on the sprinter multiplied by the distance that force was applied over. And it told us that force was applied over a distance of 25 meters, right? Good. And then multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the, these two vectors. Now, right, the net force, if he's accelerating in the right-hand direction, which he should be because his initial velocity, well, I'm assuming the problem is going to the going to the right, right? But if his initial velocity was two and his final velocity was eight and both velocities are positive, they're both pointing to the right, that must have meant that there is a net external force to the right, all right? So this should be positive. And then the distance he's moving, I'm also assuming he's traveling this way, okay? So that's also positive, so therefore the angle is zero. So the math simply works out to be just divide both sides by 25, and now the net external force, all right, is 1800 divided by 25. So 72, okay, so 72 newtons will be equal to the net external force, all right? Now here's the thing, so that's great, but don't conclude that that's the answer yet because you have to think about, you know, what that exactly represents. So let's just draw a free body diagram quickly, all right? So let's draw it up here. Now remember, he is experiencing some acceleration to the right, right? We can easily calculate that now because remember that this is the net force, all right? So we can say the sum of the forces, right, which is essentially the net force, okay, would be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So you know that this is 72. You know his mass is 60. So you can just plug that on in, right? So 72 over 60 would be 1.2. So we know the acceleration here is actually 1.2 meters per second squared to the right. That should make sense, all right? You could probably also check that using a kinematics perspective, right? 
realizing that you have the final, the initial, and the distance, you can find the um, you can find the the acceleration, right? Vf squared equals vi squared plus two ax. So you can check that if you like. Now that so now we know the acceleration is to the right at one point two meters per second. We didn't even need that, but I'm just kind of giving you some extra information. We also know that the net external force is also to the right. Okay, of seventy two newtons. Now remember, this is the net, aka the sum of the forces. All right, that's the important idea here. Now, knowing that, all right, we know that there is also some force, right? Now, we're specifically talking about the guy here, okay? We're, specific, we're not talking about his foot yet hitting the ground over here. Right? We're just talking about forces acting on him, all right? So there's a headwind, and it's opposing, right? It says it opposes him. So it has to be pointing, if he's moving, accelerating to the right, it opposes him at uh, with a force of 30 newtons, as it told us here. Then there must be some applied force to the right, okay? So this applied force now is the force that he's applying to the ground, right? Equal but opposite, actually, because this is really the force that the ground's applying to him, all right? So, but let's just keep it right here for now, and then I'll talk more specifically. So now, right, in order for the acceleration to be to the right, there must be some average um, not average, there must be some applied force pointing to the right that is greater than the force to the left. So all I need to now simply do is write just basically sum this all together. All right, so we can easily now find uh, this value. All right, so how do we do that? Well, all I have to do is this now, right? Plug it into the formula, sum the forces, and I'll just do, I'll just use this. So some of the forces uh, in the x direction should equal to max, right? So we found that there's an applied force, right? Fa minus 30, because that's pointing to the left, equals the mass of the individual, 60 kilograms, multiplied them by 1.2. So simply just add the 30 on over. And we find that the applied force here, right, is going to be, 60 times 1.2, which was 72, right? That's what we did before, um, plus 30. So 102. Okay, great. So 102 newtons. So this is the applied force here. All right, great. Now, let's think about this. So now remember, I was kind of, I was just thinking about forces acting, let's say, at this particular point on him, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to talk about what's going on here on the ground, Okay, what's going on right here when his foot's pushing off the ground? All right, so we're talking about that system specifically now. Okay, so this particular point, let me draw an axis right here. Now, this applied force that we just calculated, okay, is the force the ground is applying to him, right? Because it's pointing to the right, right? He's pushing back on the earth, and then Newton's third law says that there's an equal but opposite force if there's no acceleration, pushing back in the right-hand direction. And there is no acceleration here, right? The Earth isn't, I mean, it's not, it's pushing back with an equal but opposite. It's not moving at all, okay? There's no acceleration at this point. His body's acceleration, excuse me, his body is accelerating, but there's no acceleration here. So, therefore, if the ground is pushing this way on the sprinter with 102 newtons of force, guess what he's pushing back on the ground with? 102 newtons of force. Okay, so they have to be equal but opposite. So that's really why the answer is 102 newtons. It's the same as this, but I just want to try to give you a little more detail there as to why it is. You know, don't just conclude here at the end. I want you to know, be able to connect this applied force, which is really the force the earth exerts on him, back to then the force he applies backward on the earth. All right, so that would be your final answer. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.